Theater's Playwrights Theater presents 27 Wagons Full of Cotton by the Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Tennessee Williams. And now, General Motors Playwrights Theater with your host, Anthony Quinn. General Motors, makers of quality products from Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, GMC truck divisions, and GMAC, is proud to present the General Motors Playwrights Theater. This is a General Motors Mark of Excellence presentation. It's commitment. Tonight, uh, we present an early and controversial play by Tennessee Williams. It is a one act called 27 Wagons Full of Cotton. Like much of his later work, its adult theme deals with the brutal seduction of a fragile, childlike woman. In fact, it was this play that he later developed into the movie Baby Doll. One of Williams' favorite themes was the disintegration of Southern values. Tonight's play might be unsuitable for family viewing. However, Tennessee Williams was unquestionably one of the greatest playwrights of the American contemporary theater. Today, in all media, there's a tremendous resurgence of popularity for his work, which remains as vital and exciting as when he first wrote them. And now, 27 wagons full of cotton. Nobody, never, 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 nobody. Well. What's the matter, baby? I never known a human being could be that mean and thoughtless. Well, now that's a mighty broad statement, Mrs. Mann. 
What's the complaint this time? Just flew out of the house, not even saying a word. What's so bad about that? I told you I had a headache coming on. I had to have a dope, and there wasn't a single bottle left in the house. And you said, yeah, get into your things. So I go on, and I get into my things, and then I, I, I can't find my white kid's purse. I remember I left it in the Chevy. I come out here to get it, and where are you? Cut off without a word. And there's a big explosion. Feel my heart. Feel my baby's heart. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you just feel it, pound like a hammer. How do I know what happened? You just gone off and disappeared so... Shut up! What'd you do that for? I don't like how you holler. You holler everything you say. Well, where'd you go? What's the matter with you? There's nothing the matter with me. Why'd you have to go off? I didn't go off. You certainly did go off. Don't tell me you didn't go off now. I just now seen and heard you driving back in your car. What'd you take me for? No sense at all. Got any sense? You keep your big mouth shut. Don't talk to me like that. Come on inside. I won't. Mean and selfish, that's what you are. I told you after supper there wasn't a bottle of cola left in the house. And you said, yeah, right after supper, we're going over to the White Star Drug Store and laying a good supply. And then when I come out of the house, oh! Look at here, baby. Just hey, listen to what I tell you. Let go! Baby, just listen. Mm. Just try and concentrate on what I tell you. <laughs> I ain't been off the porch. <laughs> What? I ain't been off the porch of this house, not since supper. Um, you understand that now? Jake, honey, you gone out. You don't mind. Maybe so, but never you mind. You just get that straight and keep it in your head now. I ain't been off the porch of this house since um, supper. You sure as golf is off it. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. Where have I been since supper? <laughs> yeah, yeah, on the porch. Where have I been? Within. Yeah. Doing what? Take my Doing what? Oh. What doing since supper? How in hell do I know? Because you was right here with me, sweetheart, for every second, all the time. Just you and me sitting together on the swing, just swinging back and forth by every minute since supper. You got that in your head good now? Let me go. You got it good now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's Where go. was I then? Swinging, for Christ's sake, swinging. That's my... That's my sweet baby girl. Her? Her? Good. Go on, make a little room. It's hot. Go on, make a little room. Yeah. yeah. Cross patch. Yeah, who's baby? Big, sweet. Kiss? Mm. What would I do if you was angel food cake? A nice big white piece with lots of thick icing? <laughs> gobble, gobble, gobble! Huh? Answer a little question. What? Where have I been since supper? I'll finish it. Where have I been since supper? Oh, here. Doing what? Oh, swaying cross. Hurt? Good. Now, you know where I've been and what I've been doing since mm -hmm. supper. Yeah. Huh? In case anybody should ask. Who's gonna ask? Well, just you never mind who's gonna <laughs> ask. Just you make sure you know all the answers, uh-huh? Uh-huh. Huh? This is where you've been, sitting on the swing, since after we had supper, swinging back and forth and back and forth. And you didn't go off in a chevy. And you was awfully surprised when the syndicate fire broke out. Oh! Everything you said was all right. Don't you get ideas? Ideas? A woman like you is made to be hugged and squeezed, but not for ideas. So don't have ideas. <laughs> now go on and get in the Chevy. Are we going to the fire? No, we ain't going to no fire. We're going in town to get us a case of dopes because we're hot and thirsty. I lost my white kid purse. It's on the seat of the Chevy where you left it. Where are you going? I'm going into the toilet. I'll be right out. My baby don't care for rain or other expensive things. My baby just cares for me. Well, 
so all I got to say is you're a mighty lucky little fella. Lucky? In what way? That I can do a job like this right now. 27 wagons full of cotton's a pretty big piece of business, Mr. Vaccaro. Baby! Mom? Uh, what's your first name? Silva. How do you spell it? S-I-L-V-A. Silva. Like a uh, silver lining. Every cloud has got a silver lining. Where does that come from, the Bible? No, the Mother Goose book. Yes, sir. You sure are lucky I can do it. If I'd have been busy like I was two weeks ago, I'd have turned it down. Baby, come out here a minute. Lucky. Very lucky. Mr. Vicar, I want you to meet Mrs. Me. <laughs> Baby, this is a very down-at-the-mouth young fella. I want you to cheer up for me. He thinks he's out of luck because his cotton gin burnt down. And he's got 27 wagons full of cotton to be ginned out on a hurry-up order for his most important customers in Mobile. Well, I said to him, sir, you ought to be congratulated, Mr. Vaccaro. Not because it burnt down, but because I happen to be in a situation to take the business over. Now, you tell him how lucky he is. <laughs> I don't think he sees how lucky it was to have his chin burned down. No, ma'am. Mr. Vicara, some fellas marry a woman when she's little and tiny. They're like a <laughs> small fig, you see. <laughs> However, I never made that mistake, Mr. Vicara. When I fell in love with this baby doll I got here, she was just the same shape you see her today. <laughs> a woman not large, but tremendous. <laughs> That's how I liked her. Yeah. Tremendous. I told her right off when I slipped that ring on her finger one Saturday night in the boathouse in Moon Lake. I said to her, honey, you take one single pound off that body, I'm going to quit you. I'm going to quit you the moment I notice you started to change. <laughs> I don't like nothing little, not in a woman. I'm not after nothing petite, as the Frenchman call it. This is what I wanted and what I got. Look at her, Mr. Vicaro. Look at her blush. See what a doll she is? Oh, Jake. Jake. <laughs> now, baby, you keep Mr. Vicara comfortable while I'm ginning out that 27 wagons full of cotton. The good neighbor policy, Mr. Vicaro. You do me a good turn, I'll do you a good one. Be seeing you. So long, baby. Good neighbor policy. Hmm. <laughs> Isn't he outrageous? <laughs> well, I wouldn't dare to expose myself like that. Expose? To what? <laughs> the sun. I take a terrible burn. I'll never forget the burn I took one time. <laughs> it was on a Sunday on Moon Lake, far as married. I never did like to go fishing, but this young fella, one of the Houston boys, he insisted that we go fishing. Well, he didn't catch nothing, but he just kept fishing, and I just sat there in the boat with that hot sun on me. <laughs> I said, stay under the willows, but he wouldn't listen to me. I took such an awful burn, I had to sleep on my stomach the next three nights. What did you say? You got some burn? Yeah. One time on Moon Lake. Got over it all right, did you? <laughs> yeah, finally. Well, must have hurt pretty bad. Well, I fell in the lake once, too. <laughs> On another fishing trip, one of those peasant boys. <laughs> oh, wow, a bunch of boys, those peasant boys. <laughs> I never went out with them, but something happened made me wish I hadn't. One time sunburn, one time nearly drowned. One time, mm, whoo, poor Navi. <laughs> We had a great deal of fun inside it, though. <laughs> Good neighbor policy, huh? Oh! <laughs> Why don't you just come up here on the porch and make yourself comfortable as you can? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not much good at making conversation. Oh, don't you uh, worry about making no conversation for my benefit, Mrs. Meehan. <laughs> I'm the type that prefers a quiet understanding. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. One thing I've noticed about you ladies. What's that, Mr. Vicar? Oh, you. You always carry something in your hand. Oh. You're not afraid I'm going to snatch it, are you? <laughs> I can't, no, I wasn't afraid of that. Wouldn't be the good neighbor policy now, would it? <laughs> <laughs> you carry that purse with you because it gives you something to get a grip on. Know what I mean? Well, yeah. 
I always like to have something in my hand. Sure you do. <laughs> you feel what a lot of uncertain things there are. Chins burned down. Volunteer fire department don't have decent equipment. Nothing is any protection. The trees at the back of the house, they're no protection. Mm. A lot of goods, this dress is made of. It's no protection. So what do you do, Mrs. Meehan? You carry that white kid purse. It's sure, it's solid, it's, it's, it's decent. It gives you something to hold on to, know what I mean? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah. Gives you a feeling of holding on to something like a uh, mother protecting the baby. No, 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 no. The baby protecting the mother from being lost and empty. Having nothing but lifeless things in our hands. Huh. Huh. Maybe you think there isn't much connection. You have to excuse me from thinking. I'm, I'm too lazy. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name, Mrs. Mia? Flora. <laughs> Mine's silver. Mm. Something not gold, but silver. Like a silver dollar? No. More like a silver dime. Oh. <laughs> it's not tell your name. I'm a native of New Orleans. Then it's not sunburn. You're just naturally dark. Look at that. Oh! <laughs> Mr. McCara. Just as dark as my arm is. Well, you don't have to show me. I'm not from Missouri. Oh, well. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I wish we had a coal in this house. We were going to get a whole case of them last night, but what with all the excitement going on? Oh, well. What excitement was that? Oh, the fire and all. I should see how y'all be excited about a fire. Oh, fire's always exciting. Dogs and chickens don't sleep. I don't think our chickens got to sleep all night. No. No, they just cackled and fussed and flopped around on the roof. Something awful. <laughs> Myself, I couldn't sleep neither. I just lay there and sweated all night long. On count of fire? Oh. Heat and the mosquitoes. Yeah, I was mad at Jake. You're Mr. Me? Yeah. What about? He went off and left me on this old porch without a coal in the house. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Went off and left you, did he? Right after supper. When he got back, fire already broke out. And instead of driving into town like he said he would, he decided to take a look at your burnt down gin. I got smoke in my eyes and my nose and my throat. Hurt my sinus. Oh, I was in such a worn out, nervous condition. I cried. I cried like a baby. I'd take two teaspoons of paragoric, enough to put an elephant to sleep. Still, I laid awake and was listening to them chickens all night long. Sound like you passed a very uncomfortable evening. I sound like? <laughs> well, it was. So you say your husband disappeared after supper? Huh? Say your husband was out of the house for a while after supper. Oh. Just for a moment. Oh, just for a moment. Well, how, how long a moment? I, I don't know what you're driving at, Mr. Bacall. Driving at? Well, <laughs> nothing. Oh. You're kind of looking funny. Disappeared for a moment. Is that what he did? How long a moment was it? Uh, can you remember, Mrs. Meehan? Well, what difference does it make? What's it to you anyhow? <laughs> well, why would you mind me asking? Because <laughs> you make me feel like I was on trial for something. Would you like to pretend <laughs> like you're a witness? Witness of what, Mr. Picard? Well, for instance, let's say a uh, case of arson. Case of... Well, what is arson? Well, a willful destruction of property by fire. <gasps> oh. Well, don't you be getting any ideas, Mr. Vicara. Ideas by what, Miss Mia? Well, my husband disappeared after supper. I can explain that. You can? Sure, I can. Good. 
How do you explain it? What's the matter, Miss Smith? Can't collect your thoughts. Uh, Mine's blank on the subject. We... Find it impossible to remember just what he disappeared for last night <laughs> supper. Can't imagine what errand he went on at Center Mount, can you? Oh, I can't. But when he returned, let's see. A fire had just broken out at the syndicate plantation. I don't know what you're driving at, Mr. Picard. Oh, a very unsatisfactory witness, Mrs. Meehan. Uh, oh, I never can thank when people stare straight at me. Oh, well, I'll just look away then. There, now. Does that improve your memory any? Are you able to concentrate on a question? Hmm? No? You're not? Uh, well, <laughs> why don't we just change the subject? Oh, I... Uh, Mm, I sure do wish you would. <laughs> no use crying over burnt down gin. This world is built on the principle of tit for tat. <laughs> what do you mean? Mm. Nothing at all specific. Do you mind if I... Uh... What? Well, don't you... Uh... Move over a little bit to make some room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Mm, I like a swing. I like to rock, swing. It relaxes me. Mm. You relax, Miss Me? Sure I am. No, you're not. Your <laughs> nerves are all tied up. Oh, you made me nervous asking me all those questions about the fire. Mm, I didn't ask you questions about the fire. I asked you questions about your husband's disappearance last night. I explained that to you. Oh, that's right, you did. Yeah. You did. <laughs> oh. The good neighbor policy. That was a lovely remark your husband made about the good neighbor policy. I see what he means by that now. Oh. Oh. He was thinking about President Roosevelt's speech. We sat and listened to it one night last week. No, 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 no. I think he was talking about something a little closer to home. Hmm. Do me a good turn, I'll do you one. That's the way he put it. Oh, Miss Meehan, well, you have a piece of cotton on your face. No, no, allow me, please. <sighs> there, now. <laughs> Thanks. A lot of fine cotton floating in the air. I know, it hurts my nose. It gets up in my sinus. <laughs> You're a delicate woman. <laughs> Delicate, no. Oh, no, I'm too big for that. Part of your delicacy. What do you mean? There's a lot of you. But every bit of you is delicate. <laughs> Choice. Delectable, I might add. <laughs> well, you're certainly lacking in any coarseness. You're soft, fine fabric, and smooth. Talk is certainly taking a personal turn. Yes, well, you make me think of cotton. Huh? Cotton. Oh. Well, should I say thanks or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, just smile, Mrs. Meehan. Oh, you've an attractive smile. Dimple. No. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you have. To... There they are. No. Look at it. There. Oh. There. Oh. Oh. Please, don't touch me. I, I don't like to be touched. <laughs> Why do you do? <laughs> Girls, you make me feel kind of hysterical. Mr. Vicara. Yes? I, I hope you don't think that Jake was mixed up in that fire. I swear to goodness, he never left the front porch. I remember perfectly now. We sat here on the swing till after supper, then we drove into town. Supper? And the bar... No, 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 no. Oh, that's not what you told me a moment ago. 27 wagons full of cottons, a mighty big piece of business just fall on your lap like a gift from the gods, Mrs. Meehan. I thought you said we'd drop the subject. You brought it up that time. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Please don't try to mix me up anymore. When he got back, fire had already broke out. That's not what you said a moment ago. Oh, you get me all twisted up. Let's see. 
We're driving to town, the fire broke out, and oh, we didn't know nothing about it. You said that it irritated your sinus. <laughs> She'll put words in my mouth. I think I'm gonna fix fix us a nice pitcher of lemonade. Don't you go no trouble. I'm gonna fix it directly. I, I just feel kind of weak. I know what's the matter with me. Can't keep my eyes open. They keep falling shut. I think it's too crowded, two of us on the swing. Would you do me a favor? Would you just, would you just sit down back over there? Why do you want me to move, Miss Mia? Uh, I think it's too much body heat, two of us here together. One body can borrow coolness from another. I always heard about his borrowed heat. Not in my case. I'm cool. You don't feel cool to me. Just as cool as a cucumber. <laughs> if you don't believe me, touch me. Where? Anywhere. Well, I don't want to be deprived of your oh. company yet. <laughs> yeah, you're not familiar, Mr. Well, your fun of and spirit? <laughs> you're mine. Then why do you kill me? Oh, because you're tickling me. Oh. oh, quit tickling. Just watching Uncle Flash. Oh, they don't hurt nothing. Just leave them alone. Oh, that blue mark on your wrist. What about it? Got a suspicion. <laughs> what? It was twisted by your husband. Crazy. Yes, it was. And I think you liked it. I certainly didn't. Mm. Would you mind moving your arm? Don't be so skittish. <laughs> All right. I'll get up then. Go on. You're a delicate woman, Mrs. Mia. Uh, big woman, too. No, so is America big. <laughs> well, that's a funny <laughs> remark. <laughs> I don't know why I said it. My head's so fuzzy. Hmm. <laughs> fuzzy? Fuzzy and fuzzy. Mama? No. But, but you're brushing. Sweat off. Leave it alone. Let me wipe it. No, don't. It feels funny. How's it feel? I mean, it tickles me up, up and down, don't. Uh, if, you don't if you don't stop, I'm, I'm going to call someone. Oh, who? Hmm? That boy. That boy across the road. Go ahead. Call him. Hey. <laughs> oh, hey, boy. Did you call me like oh. Hmm? I feel, I feel so weak. I don't know what's the matter with me. You're just relaxing, Mrs. Meehan. I like you. Don't get so uh, excited. I'm not. You just... What am I doing? Hmm? Suspicions. Mm-hmm. By my husband and... I did 
advice you have about me? Mm. Huh? I just about what? That he burnt your gin down. Oh, he didn't. Well, my, a big piece of cotton. I'm gonna go inside. That's a good idea. No, no. I said I was, not you. Mm. Why not me? Huh? Why not it's me? It's crowded there. Two of us. Three's a crowd with two. Oh, you stay out right here. What do you do? Make us a, a nice picture of lemonade. Go on in. Will you do? I'll follow. I I figured you might be having to do that. No. We'll both stay here. In the sun. No, go back in the shade. Stand in my way. Stand in mine. Oh, I've been weak. Oh. Maybe you ought to lie down. How oh, can I? Go in. You follow. What if I did? I'm afraid. A what? What of? You. I'm little. I feel so weak. We need like water. I gotta stand on Oh. Go in. I can't. Why? You'd fall. Would that be so awful? Hmm? You got a mean looking. He didn't, I swear. Honestly, he didn't. What? What? Power. Go in. Please don't follow. Please How's baby? <laughs> tired? Too tired to talk? Well, that's how I feel. Too tired to talk. Too goddamn tired to speak a friggin' word. <laughs> 27 wagons full of cotton. That's how much I ginned out since 10 this morning. A man-sized job. Man-sized job. Twenty-seven wagons full of cotton. Twenty-seven wagons. <laughs> what are you laughing at, honey? Not at me, I hope. No. That's good. Well, it's a job I've turned out. It's nothing to laugh at. Man, I drove that pack like a mule scatter. They ain't got a brain in their bodies. They ain't got nothing but bodies. You gotta drive, drive, drive. I don't know how they eat without somebody to tell them to put the food in their mouth. <laughs> you gotta laugh like Christ. Yeah, terrific day's work, I finished. I wouldn't brag about it. <laughs> I'm not bragging about it. I'm just saying I've done a big day's work. I'm all worn out, and I want a little appreciation, not cross speeches, honey. I'm not making cross speeches. To take on a big piece of work and finish it up, 
They didn't mention the fact that it's finished. I wouldn't call Bragg. You think you're the only one that's done a big day's work? No, well, who else did you know of? Maybe you think I had an easy time of it. <laughs> you're laughing like you're on a goddamn jag. Come on. What'd you get pissed on? Roach poison or citronella? <laughs> Man, I think I make it pretty easy for you, working like a mule skinner. So you can hire someone to take the wash and the housework on. An elevator woman who acts as frail as a kitten. That's the kind of woman I got on my hands. Yeah, sure make it easy for me. I've yet to see you lift a little finger. You got so lazy, uh, don't put your things on around the house. Half naked all the time. You live on a cloud. All you can say is, give me a soft drink. Well, I got news for you. They got a new bureau in the government files. It's called UW. Stands for useless women. <laughs> There's secret plans on foot to have them shot. Secret plans on foot. They have them shot. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> and I come home all tired and can't wait to peck at me. What are you cross about now? I think you made a big mistake. What was a mistake? Fooling the syndicate plantation. I don't know about that. We was kind of up against it, honey. The syndicate buying up all the land around here, turning the croppers off it without their wages. And they built their own gin to gin their own cotton. Looked for a while like I was stuck up high and dry. Then when the gin burnt down, and Mr. Vicaro decided he better send a little business my way. Well, I'd say the situation was much improved. Maybe you don't understand the good neighbor policy. I understand it? Well, I'm the boy that invented it. The guy was pretty well pleased when he walked over. Uh, yeah. He was pretty well pleased. How did you all get along? Oh, got along just fine. Fine and dandy. He didn't seem like such a bad little guy. He takes a sensible attitude. Oh, it sure does take a sensible attitude. I hope you made him comfortable in the house. I made him a pitcher. Nice, cold lemonade. Well, that's what you got pissed on, with a little gin in it, huh? Man, a nice cool drink don't sound too bad to me right now. You got any left? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Man, but drink it all up. <laughs> so you didn't have such a tiresome time after all? No, not tiresome a bit. <sighs> Had a nice conversation with Mr. Vicar. Really? Yeah. Well, what did you all talk about? Good neighbor policy. <laughs> the good neighbor policy? Yeah. How does he feel about the good neighbor policy? Well, he thinks it's a real good idea. Yeah. He says it. Huh? <laughs> says what? He says... Whatever he said must have been a panic. He said he don't think he's going to build him a new cotton gin anymore. He's going to let you do all the gin for him. Yeah, I told you he'd take a sensible attitude. Yeah. Tomorrow he... Plans to come back with lots more cotton. Maybe another 27 wagons full. Yeah? Yeah. While you're out there, Jenna, you'll have me entertain him. With nice, cold lemonade. <laughs> yeah, man. The more I hear about that lemonade, the better I like it. Lemonade highballs, huh? Mr. Thomas Collins? I guess it's gonna go on. The rest of the summer. Well, it'll, it'll soon be fall. Cooler nights coming on. I don't think that's going to put a stop to it, though. Yeah, it feels cooler already. You shouldn't be sitting out here without your shirt on, honey. Uh -huh. 
change into air can give you a bad cold. I couldn't stand nothing on me. Next to my skin. It ain't the heat that gives you hives, it's too much liquor. Grog blossoms, that's what you got. I'm going inside to the toilet. When I come out, we'll drive into town, see what's at the movies. You go hop in the Chevy. I really ought to have a white kid purse. Water full Kleenex make it big. <laughs> Big like a baby. Big like a, a baby in my arms. What'd you say, baby? I'm not baby. I'm mama. <laughs> Ma, that's me. Rock, goodbye. Baby in the treetop, when the wind blows, cradle will rock. When the tide breaks, cradle will fall. Then will come, baby, cradle and all. In the 1940s, Tennessee Williams declared he'd put all the nice things he had to say about people in glass menagerie and warned that his future writing would be harsher. But he always championed the fragile people, those who against all odds still needed some dignity in their lives. And tonight's play, though daring, is no exception. Tennessee Williams' poetry, and it was poetry, has become part of the language of the American theater. Thank you for joining us this evening. Good night. This is Jean Marsh. Please join me for the critically acclaimed The House of Elliot, Sunday at 10 Eastern, 11 Pacific, here on A&E. Saturday, Melanie Griffith makes her film debut as a wild teenager on the run. Gene Hackman and James Woods co-star in Night Moves. Now stay tuned for A&E's An Evening at the Improv, next on A&E.